the diff itself will be a chain driven diff using the differential from any vehicle with the ring gear removed and the sprocket bolted on where the ring gear used to go. You may be asking now what diff did I use originally to take this spider gear differential unit out of. The Audi Quattro all road diff has an interesting diff case. It's accessed from the side which enables the diff unit simply to be pulled out. I'll take off the taper bearings on both sides and replace them with straight normal deep groove roller bearings. This particular diff has uh, dry flanges. The dry flanges will also conveniently be a mounting point for inboard discs. This happens to be the 240mm rear rotor from the Suzuki RF900. And then in turn the axle flange, axle flange CV will bolt into that and drive out to the wheels. The spiders will be filled with grease to keep them lubricated and then an enclosing pot put over the outside to keep the grease in place. And it will all sit in a frame. Now by my calculations the frame has to be strong enough to take a tension pull on the chain of approximately 3,000 pounds. This super dodgy technique with inadequate equipment is just bending up the bearing shell but I don't see any reason to stop. Ooh, my goodness. Well, that's half the job done. Roll the bearings all over the workshop floor. Amazingly, with a combination of heat, pulling with this manky two-legged wonky puller, and a bit of whacking, the bearing is actually coming off. There will be some machining required to get these 40mm plumber's blocks to fit the bearing area on the diff. The bearing area on the diff is about 41mm, slightly larger on the crown wheel side than the other side. So I have to machine that down uh, to a location fit. Also the stub shafts there. Uh, I have to machine down to a sliding fit because they will in fact tuck into the plumber block slightly. I had assumed or hoped that the end of the output shafts was 100 mils, which would fit a standard uh, VW CV. Alas, the VW CV is 100 mils, but the output from the Audi is larger than that, probably about 105. So there's a little bit more adapting necessary there so that I can line up the holes from the CV uh, with suitable holes in the output shaft. However, I intend to have inboard disc brakes. These are the disc brakes from uh, the Suzuki 900, which means I'm going to have to put in some sort of adapter anyway to carry the brakes and now this adapter can also carry the offset in the bolt hole locations. Another machining job of course. The diff needs to be converted to sprocket drive. Now, this is a 41 tooth alloy sprocket suitable for 530 chain which is what the Suzuki 900 has. And this uh, will have its centre removed so that it can then move over the top of the uh, diff housing, spider housing, and be bolted into the areas where previously the ring gear was bolted. Then it's all, all of the uh, spider gears are encased in this pot, 
uh, which will very nicely slide over the whole assembly to retain the grease. So there's a lot of machining to do, uh, essentially to bring these surfaces down to the right diameter and to be concentric so that I don't get vibration through the diff, which spins at quite a speed. And similarly, so that I don't get wobble and uh, pad knockback and vibration through the discs, through the rotor and disc brake system. So let's get into it. Sharp tool is a happy tool.
it takes a certain bravery to take an angle grinder to your brake rotors. The output flange is complete. Uh, the output adapter is uh, fitted. It's got more holes in it than Boris Johnson's party excuses. The inner ring of six holes attaches the CV. The outer ring of six holes and six bolts attaches the flange to the output shaft. And the final ring of five bolts fixes the inboard disc brake. I won't put a grease nipple in it. It's just one more thing to leak and go wrong. I'll fill it full of EP grease and then renew the EP grease whenever I do something like change a sprocket. Oof. And voila, here amidst all of the swarf, discarded tools and old rags, we have the finished chain diff unit with inboard brakes. It all seems to go round and round. The calipers, which are motorcycle calipers, will also fit to the chassis. And the long-suffering VW CV, which I was using as a mule, fits in here and through the six bolts and ties back out to the rear wheels and rear hubs, which featured in another video. So that is that part of the build done. Now on with the next part, probably the front suspension.